This game has been proudly sitting in my Steam library. It won Game of the Year and came out exactly 12 months ago. I still have to admit, I've never seen anything like it. The amount of content this game offers and the sheer number of possible ways of progressing the story is beyond anything I could have hoped for. And there was a reason, or reasons, why a lot of AAA studios were put to shame after this game's release. And the player's perspective on what a good game should look like completely shifted. I'm talking of course about Larian's baby. Baldur's Gate 3. The game that will make your fantasy roleplay experience just a bit more freaky. It reached an all-time peak of almost 900,000 players at its release. This is an insane achievement, especially for a smaller studio. Baldur's Gate 3 shows that hard work and dedication to making a fleshed out memorable and fun experience for the fans, instead of creating a quick cash grab from stupid f***ing microtransactions, is the way to go. I absolutely adore everything about this game. And I'm more of an open world, one character kinda guy. I've played Larian's previous game, Divinity Original Sin 2, thanks to a friend that had the idea to try it out. And that quickly became one of my favorite games ever. The atmosphere of the game, the characters, the story. Oh, fuck. Baldur's Gate 3 is very similar, but also very different. Turn-based combat is not for everyone. And Divinity had a lot more tricks and mechanics to completely cheese or skip the fights. Baldur's Gate has that, but not as much. It seems way more balanced. This isn't bad or anything. I'm just pointing out the difference from my perspective. After having a fair amount of hours on both of these games, I've seen some ridiculous combat cheeses in Baldur's Gate as well. For example, this guy Fracture beat the game just by walking. Check him out. Baldur's Gate is set in a D&D universe, and so the combat experience and, well, everything, is entirely based upon your decisions and then your dice rolls. It's mostly based on luck, which can be exciting. In my case it makes me rage, because what are the odds I'll miss three times in a row, Jesus Christ. But your luck can also be managed by your specific build. Look at this hot vampire guy. Oh, fuck. He's a rogue and his skills give him advantages on rogue stuff. We've just opened a chest that would otherwise be almost impossible to open. Unless you'd quick load the game a million times. D&D means role playing. And boy, is there a lot of role playing. I like to role play as someone who has his life together. You can be a mage, a warrior. You can even fuck a bear. You can fuck just about anything to be honest. The game just gives you so many options to do anything you want and play through the game in any style you see fit. The developers knew you'd be curious. Exploration and experimentation with various spells and mechanics is rewarded. It's one of the things I really look for in games nowadays. Freedom to just do what I like, without having to worry about breaking the game. I didn't mean to point out any games in particular, ha 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 wa wa I'm not saying you need to make 10 possible outcomes for every player decision, but it's good to see that what I do in the world matters in a certain way. Baldur's Gate has this, and so much more. The characters around you have unique reactions to the way you act as the player. No! What did you do? Oh, it's everywhere! You ruined a perfectly good snack. Each of your followers also has a unique personality, and quests surrounding them with multiple outcomes. These characters grow with you, and depending on how you treat them, like or dislike you. All of them can even die if you play a certain way. They learn with you and offer insight to the problems you're currently facing. You can really see a lot of thought and effort went into making them feel like real people that you could potentially be able to relate to in a certain way. The voice actors were clearly paid a fair amount. Because god damn! I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. The story is divided into three acts. The first act is full of color, and right off the bat introduces you to a vast number of unique enemies, from big spiders, <laughs> to dumb goblins, witches, and githyanki warriors that one-shot you. The second act's setting is a lot darker, and now there's JK Simmons, aka Omni-Man, aka the guy who wants pictures of Spider-Man. Instead of spiders, there's Spider-Guy, and you get attacked by shadow people all the time. And there's this big guy that you can explode if your dice are lucky. And then there's JK Simmons again, but now he's a f***ing demon. And then there the third act takes us to the city itself, Baldur's Gate. 
And no, the city's name isn't Baldur's Gate 3. And yes, there's more than one gate in Baldur's Gate. It's not just one big gate or three smaller gates that belong to Baldur. I feel like I needed to clear this up. Anyways, the final act of the game, set in Baldur's Gate 3, was by far the longest part of the entire game. You have to finish every quest line. And if you're like me, make sure you pick up every item and every piece of food possible. This is where some of my critique comes into place, and the reason why the span of a year from the game's release is important. There have been a lot of patches and some minor, and free, updates. And the studio obviously takes bugs reports seriously. The first two acts were basically flawless from a gameplay standpoint. Then it starts to get messy, especially in multiplayer. Namely, disappearing faces, stuck load screens, where I had to force shut down my computer, and I couldn't even alt tab from the game. Deposing characters, deposing characters with no clothes on or no bodies, random followers appearing naked in cutscenes, flying characters during dialogue, and whatever this is. Mind you, this happened only a handful of times, but still. The PC performance part of the third act needs a bit more work in my opinion, but hey, at least we got a patch for more kissing animations. I have no idea how I was able to play without it. The next thing I thought could be a bit tweaked, specifically the number of levels you have, or the rewards for enemies in Act 3. As I said earlier, there's a lot of story finishing in this part of the game, and thus a lot of fights, which means a lot of experience points. Now, this would be okay, but even if you're playing at a normal pace and not exploring every corner of the map, once you're in the half of the last act, you're probably going to be the highest level, and any experience points you gain from now on are just useless. I'm not saying it's bad to make a lot of enemies and bosses in the final part of the game, but at least let me level up and use my XP a bit. The characters used here weren't getting any stronger for a good part of the end game, and it's, I don't know, no, a shame? Making max level at 14 would be okay. You can make it 13 because some people would freak the f out. Few of the game bosses are even higher level than that. Namely, Raphael, the devil guy, Five. and I, as the player, could feel some more progression throughout the final act. That's about all of the things I could criticize. Honestly, this game is pretty flawless and still has a lot of active users playing it. Since the release, Larian also, among other things, added new variants to endings, and will supposedly be adding more in the newest patch. They also added a new character, the Dark Urge, which is an opportunity to have a completely evil playthrough. This guy is a menace to society. Well, at least the D&D society. This wasn't supposed to be a review, but a look back at what was made, added, and possibly fixed. The released patches really helped out with the game crashes. They even added new spells and more balance to enemies. The most important addition to the game by far was adding Shadowheart a reaction to sitting on her camp stool. You grace my stool. I'm on it. The ability to be hungover, if the supplies used for a long rest are just alcohol, is also fun. The previous patch to that introduced Honor Mode. A game mode where you have one save, and if your party dies, the save is deleted and you have to start over. This patch also had performance improvements to Act 3, but I still think it needs some more. There's just so much patch notes, guys. You can now talk to Mole more about her contract Made with Raphael in the Guild Wall. Added some additional audio and cinematic work to the intimate scene with the Druid during Black during Astarian's endgame romance scene. Withers will sneakily resurrect any dead companions that fell before the final battle so they can join the ending cinematics. What a helpful skeleton. A lot of developers from different companies were whining about Baldur's Gate being a one-time occurrence. That the game is too big for it to be an industry standard. That making games is hard. I honestly thought his whole situation was hilarious. Imagine you're a game studio full of people who want to make a big and enjoyable game. And these same people want to make it a one-time purchase. As in, you don't need to buy a DLC with horse armor for a ridiculous price. Todd, you'll get everything in the base game. And there are no microtransactions while you play the game. And other game developers were like, Nope, that's impossible to replicate. You can't expect us to make something like this again, bro. Trust me, bro. You need you to have an in-game shop with skins for your favorite Star Wars character bro. How are you supposed to play and enjoy a game that has little to no issues and actually delivers on what it promised without a bundle sale bro? These guys were ridiculous. Making games is hard, okay, but you're a game developer. And now you're using tactics to rip off your customers with ridiculous pricing for nothing substantial in return. Wow, I wonder why people don't want to play your game and instead choose to invest money into products that don't make them feel like wallets but actually respect them as customers. Some game studios, who shall remain nameless, remake a game they've already made and make it even worse. Well anyways, that was my TED talk rant about the gaming industry. 
Larian is one of the few game studios I trust these days. They've shown, especially with Baldur's Gate 3 and its release, that they are committed to making a good product instead of just making a cash grab. Another studio like this is From Software, and there are some more good guys around who don't spit on their customers and the industry as a whole. You might be thinking Bethesda is also on my good list, since I make Skyrim and Oblivion content on this channel. Um, no. <laughs> F no. <laughs> Anyways, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 3 is an amazing game. And apart from a few very small issues, it's still one of the best games I've ever played. The cutscenes where you f help with the rating. 